Now it's my great pleasure to introduce our commencement speaker, Larry Bach. Larry is a very unusual man. Larry is a venture capitalist and an entrepreneur par excellence. He has founded, co-founded, or provided early stage financing for more than four, four dozen companies, including companies in the fields of pharmaceuticals, biosciences, and more recently in nanotechnology. In, 19, in 2001, Larry founded NanoSys to pursue the promise of nanotechnology. Among the applications of the company is developing lightweight solar cells, flexible electronics, high-performance fuel cells, and advanced surface coatings for medical devices. Larry is a participant in a number of government agencies, including member of the advisory board of the NanoSys Business Alliance. He's a member of the President's Export Council sub Committee on Export Administration, and a member of the Blue Ribbon Task Force on Technology formed by Congressman Michael Honda and California State Controller Stephen Wesley. Larry earned his BA in Biochemistry, summa cum laude, from Bowdoin College in Maine, and his MBA from the Anderson School at UCLA. Although not a Berkeley graduate, he's familiar with many of the Berkeley faculty and students from in many, many different venues of his interactions with the campus. He was the keynote speaker and the groundbreaking for the Lawrence Berkeley National Laboratory Molecular Foundry and currently serves on the College of Chemistry's advisory board. He and his wife, Diane, have endowed a chair for the college in nanosciences currently held by Professor Paul Alavisados. With his wife, Diane, a business graduate of USC, they co-founded Community Cousins, a nonprofit organization designed to help break down racial barriers. This Community Cousins was selected by former Vice President Al Gore as one of the most 10 outstanding grassroots efforts nationally. Quite an itinerary. Larry's honors include the Einstein Award for Lifetime Contributions in the Field of Life Sciences, Venture Capitals Journal is one of the most 10 influential venture capitalists. The Forbes Wolf's Nano Report reports number one power broker in nanotechnology. Finalist for the Ernst & Young Entrepreneur of the Year. Red Herring's Top 10 Innovators and Small Times Innovator of the Year. You have a man of enormous breadth and experience both in science and in business. And I'm sure we, we look forward to Larry's talk. Larry's title is A Bromide for a Good Life. Join me in welcoming Larry. Thank you, Dean Harris, for that kind and incredibly generous introduction. Uh, Chairs Reimer and Marletta, distinguished faculty, and most importantly, members of the graduating class of 2007. Give yourself a hand. I would also like to acknowledge proud, relieved, and debt-ridden parents, and family members and friends who either help pay the bills or cheered you along. OK, I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, hey, Dean, what the heck is going on here? The community college across the bay gets Steve Jobs for their commencement speaker, and we get this guy who doesn't even have a job. <laughs> but take heart. At least I know the three rules of graduation speeches. Be sincere, be humble, and be seated. The sooner the better. <laughs> and with those three rules in mind, I will keep my remarks brief. But also bear in mind that my thoughts are the last impediment between you and your first phone call from the alumni office seeking donations. <laughs> a year ago, when Dean Harris asked me to speak today, little did he know that I was in a London hospital on the verge of a nervous breakdown. If he had that little tidbit of information, I doubt I'd be here today. My meltdown was caused by a perfect storm of events, including continued and severe vision loss, the suicide of my brother, unresolved issues with my father, who passed away prematurely due to a brain tumor, and most importantly, an unbridled ambition that could never be satiated. My meltdown gave me a lot of time to think about the important things in my life, 
and what I wish I knew when I was sitting where you are today. I am fully cognizant that it is impossible to put an old head on a young body, so I've tried to distill my thoughts into five simple lessons to help you get through life just a little bit easier. Lesson one, back up your hard drive. <laughs> so. What, what do I mean by that? Even though your life may be cruising along smoothly, every once in a while, I recommend that you stop and envision a sudden shipwreck occurring. Then think, rethink, and remember what you would truly want to hold on to if disaster should strike. I can guarantee you, you will not be thinking about whether you got tenure, you made partner, or about all the things you acquired such as the latest Apple iPhone, though I am on the waiting list and I really want one. <laughs> you will, I'm sure, be thinking about the true accomplishments in your life. The building of a rock-solid and loving family, investing yourself in something that you're really proud of, and establishing long-lasting and gratifying relations. Lesson two, never send out a Christmas card detailing all of your ailments. You are all high achievers. And yes, it is true that delayed gratification is a key factor in achieving future productivity and prosperity. But delaying happiness along with gratification is quite a different thing. Because each milestone along your pathway in life ought to have its own form of happiness. How many people have you heard say things like, I will be happy when my company, first company goes public. My wife heard that. I will be happy when my kids get out of college. I will really be happy when I win the Nobel Prize. From what I've seen of life so far, I think Abraham Lincoln got it spot on when he said, most people are just about as happy as they make up their minds to be. Let me run that by you one more time. Most people are just about as happy as they make up their minds to be. So, as some famous rabbi said, or, or, or maybe it was Gina Davis and Commander-in-Chief. <laughs> if not now, when? Lesson three. Remember that life is about two-legged mammals. Uh, my former business partner, when asked how did he become so wealthy, used to say, I invest in two-legged mammals. In my career as a startup entrepreneur, I've tried to remain deliberately focused on the value of people even amidst our ever-growing worship of technology. I don't look for cool ideas and great technologies to invest in, but rather I look for people who have the courage and drive to develop great ideas. I am always dumbfounded by people who overutilize technology to foster relations and enhance communication. Yes, technologies like email, instant messaging, second life, and the Facebook wall. <laughs> In my view, there is just no substitute for direct communication to get past the superficial and to connect with the soul of another human. In, in fact, I wish I had a dime for every misconstrued email I've sent or received. And I wish I had a penny for every time my daughter was poked on Facebook. Uh, the, the key, uh, uh, oh, excuse me, um, I lost my thought. Uh, okay, um, my, my wife often asks me, Larry, why can't you do more of your job on the phone and travel less? And my response to her is an unequivocal, I just can't. I just can't because it's not enough to read the business plans and the resumes. Reports and analyses can't convey qualities such as passion, such as inspiration, such as imagination, and that overwhelming hunger to succeed. The secret to success in startups, or any other collaboration for that matter, is to find and team yourself up with people who will drive and drag you to success. And there's just no technological shortcut for that. Lesson four. Uh, 